Would you like to find out what you can do in order to pass your CIMA case study exam? What you can do on your side in order to make sure that you have everything that you need in order to succeed in your exam? Well, in this short video, we are going to talk about what you can do in order to increase your chances of succeeding in a case study exam. Hi, my name is Justina. I'm from Practices Academy, the number one tuition provider for interactive and intuitive practice tests for SEMA OT exams. For the last few sittings, we have been also offering management case study um, resources, and I'm very happy to announce that starting from November 2017, we are going to even further increase our offer to support strategic case study students. Now, I think this is really the best time to rethink our approach towards how we as a tuition provider can support SEMA students in the best way. So I was thinking, what actually brings value when you are preparing for your case study, but not only what brings value, but actually what brings the biggest value in order of the time spent and the result that you get afterwards. So in this process of rethinking, I had a chance to have a chat with Paul Russell, who is right now leading case study part within Practices Academy. Let me tell you something more about Paul. Paul Russell is a tutor with a massive experience in accountancy tuition. He's been doing that for the last 25 years. He's been teaching in a leading tuition providers across UK and Ireland, both in the classroom trainings and online. He's been teaching students from all over the world, and especially he focused on case studies. That's why he right now he's a, our leading tutor for case studies, and he's leading that part within Practice Test Academy. He has convinced me that his approach is totally unique, it's different, and I would even dare to say it's revolutionary. And I hope at the end of this video, you are going to have the same impression that his teaching methods are far better than anything that you can find anywhere. <laughs> Paul, so what do you think, what differentiates you from any other tuition providers? Um, I think a couple of things, um, Justina. Um, I think that for students sitting case study exams, they have you know, so many different choices, don't they? Um, and I think for case studies, <laughs> the difficulties since the uh, case studies were introduced at the beginning of 2015 is that there's quite a lot of confusion um, in relation to what is the best approach. I think different tuition bodies uh, will tell students different things. And really what I've done since the uh, introduction of the case studies at, at the beginning of 2015, I've really studied uh, very, very carefully uh, uh, the background to the case studies. In other words, why that they were introduced and indeed what the examiner is testing. And uh, really what makes me different, what makes us different and, and what will make our, our approach different this time round in November 17 is really that our approach is going to be based not so much on looking at the three subjects and the pre-scene and moving from them towards a passing script. Our approach is going to be based on actually the reverse, because I firmly believe, and I've had a lot of success in classes, uh, traditional classes with lots and lots of students, and also with one-to-one -one students. <coughs> My pass rates are very, very good. And the approach that I've used is, what we need to do is we need to start with the passing script first, and then move towards the content of the three subjects in the pre-scene, rather than in the reverse. So really my approach is to try to get the students to understand, and we'll be talking about this in the master classes, exactly what are SEMA testing? What do they want you to produce in a good script? And unfortunately, I feel that, um, and if you, if you look at forums, if you, if you speak to student resitters, for example, you'll see that many of them, most of them, will have the former approach. In other words, their emphasis is not on how do I produce a, a passing script. Their emphasis is on perhaps the three uh, subjects, you, you know, whether or not it's E2, P2, and F2. And I think that's incorrect. And uh, unfortunately, this is, uh, if you will, this approach is peddled by some institutions in the UK 
and indeed beyond. So I think the main thing in a nutshell uh, as to the difference between how we're going to approach it uh, this time around and how other tuition providers approach it is an understanding of what a passing script means, okay? So let me give you a, just a quick example of that, okay? okay. Um, if you look at the examiner's reports for any of the case studies, in particular the strategic case studies, one of the things that you'll see constantly repeated and what annoys the examiner is that the students don't answer the question, okay? And, you know, let's think about it. I mean, this is a professional high-level uh, qualification. If you're in the office in real life working and if your line manager says to you, I need you to do this and this, if you don't actually do what your line manager asks you to do, then your line manager is not going to be very happy. And unfortunately, it's the same in the exam, Justina. What they're testing is, can you, in a pressurized environment, when you're stressed, can you deal correctly with the requirement that you've been asked? Now, if you don't understand what the requirement is, if you haven't practiced mock exams, etc., or if you're thinking about knowledge dumps, if you're thinking about wheeling out some topics from E2 or P2 or F3 or P3, you're not going to get a pass in that particular task and you're not going to get a pass overall. So um, a little bit of a long-winded answer, uh, uh, Justina, but that's, for me, at the core of what we're going to do differently this time round. Yeah? We're going to make sure that the students understand what a passing script involved, involves. And we're going to ensure through our marking service uh, and indeed the master classes, we're going to enable the students to hone their skills so that on the big day, on exam day, they're actually going to have a much better feel as to what they're needing to do line by line, paragraph by paragraph and page by page. Mm -hmm. And having marked uh, uh, Justina so many MCS and uh, SCS scripts over the last couple of years, I can tell you that that is at the core of success or, or indeed failure. This is why students fail case study exams, absolutely categorically. Does, it, does that make sense to you? Yes, of course. And um, you've touched upon a very interesting point about the master classes. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be an interview uh, for case study students, so we don't want to do too much selling. However, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited, I'm really excited about the fact that we are launching the master classes. And what you just mentioned about um, what students usually do, what's their typical way of preparing mm -hmm. and how to change that approach and focus on the right things and what to do in order mm -hmm. to increase your chance of passing is actually at the heart of the master classes. So can you maybe very quickly tell us a little bit more about master classes? What's the main point here? And why are they different than any other master classes that people can attend online? Okay, okay. I mean, I, 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 take, your, uh, I take your point about uh, not selling. Maybe we could do just a little bit of selling, but I'm, I'm, not here to, um, I'm, not, I'm not here to sell, sell, sell in this uh, interview. Um, what I would say is this. I think that, um, you know, in terms of the two master classes that we have available, we have a master class one and two, one just at the start, and one, <coughs> excuse me, just before the exam. I think in terms of uh, the content and the difference between those two classes, let me deal with the first one first, if I could, okay. Christina. Um, you'll see from our website um, the detail, in other words, the main core elements within the class. And it's pretty comprehensive in my view and, and, and probably better than uh, some of the uh, 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 tuition that's available um, outside of Practice Test Academy. Essentially, what we're trying to do with Masterclass One is really kickstart students in their sort of uh, journey towards MCS or SCS success. So the, really the essence of the masterclass, masterclass one, is whether or not you're going to attend masterclass two, and we would encourage you to do so. But masterclass one can be, if you will, um, standalone. And that's supposed to give you a very, very good feel very, very quickly about uh, uh, items such as, what's the case study about? But why did they introduce it? 
how do you use the pre-scene? How should, how should you use our mock exams? You know, what you should be doing in relation to the industry and indeed your industry analysis. And then we have several products that are really, really going to help you in that respect. But what I would say, Justina, and you'll know this from your own experience of, uh, of doing your SEMA case studies, is that for me, there is a big, big caveat, yeah, a very big uh, warning about this whole area, for example, of the pre scene yeah, and indeed the industry. Now, obviously, researching this, the industry is important, and as I've mentioned, we have products for that. But I think that what the masterclass is going to do, masterclass one, if I could summarize it and say, this is the big benefit yeah, for a student, for argument's sake, who's only going to attend the first masterclass, and I hope that they'll attend both of them. Um, but let's just say that they only wanted to attend the, the first one, and that's all that they could afford. I mean, you know, we all have our budgets and uh, uh, cash flow issues, etc. What that masterclass is going to do is give them a good understanding of the big picture and make sure, most importantly, that they do not spend six or seven or eight weeks or thereabouts expending effort on areas that are a complete waste of their time. And again, going back to my point about students being uh, misinformed uh, with respect uh, about uh, case studies, is that this is another area that students fall down on. In other words, for me, this passing the case study, whether or not it's the MCS or, or, or the SCS, is about are we doing enough of the right activities in terms of our time? And are we lessening or making sure that we're not doing a lot of the, the wrong activities. So really what the masterclass is going to do is to jumpstart a student's approach to the case studies and make sure that they understand the fundamentals and that they understand what they need to do to have success. In terms of masterclass two, slightly different because obviously masterclass two is just off the main exam. And what we're looking to do there, it's obviously a revision masterclass. We're hoping that students will arrive at that masterclass having done a significant amount of good work. Now, this second masterclass is going to be intensive. It's going to be intensive. It's going to be fast. And the focus of it really is, you know, what have we established from the performance of students in the mock exams? In other words, what are students doing well and what are they, what are they doing badly? And that second uh, revision masterclass is really going to give students a real bump towards success, not only by looking at the mock exams, but also by honing in on what are the key problems that students are facing in relation to this particular pre-scene. Does, does that make sense? Yes, of course, because in my opinion also the quality is very, very important and I think that students have been misleaded or have a little bit different or maybe not 100% correct approach towards preparing and I know that from my own experience since I passed SCS exam uh, a while ago, mm -hmm. that we tend to start basically doing things in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, and by saying that, I mean preparing, revising the materials, and then afterwards, you know, spending a lot of time on pre scene and industry. I'm not saying they are not important, they are. Mm -hmm. However, you know, when you spend a lot of time here and there, then you don't have enough time to practice the mocks or review past exams. And I think this is what makes it really uh, the most beneficial for for SEMA students and what actually can make them make the difference between failure and pass. Exactly, exactly. I think much of what we've said so far, Justina, is about this whole issue of reverse engineering. Um, you know, the idea that it's incorrect, as you've just said, to actually consider, let's take the SES, for example. You know, it's incorrect to say, and this is often what certainly research students that I've come across will say, is that the, the first thing that we should be doing or the first thing that a student should be doing when they start preparing for the SCS exam is getting out the three texts of the, the strategic level subjects. In other words, that's what students will do. That's what they tell me. Particularly researchers, you know, I, uh, I haven't sat P3 for 18 months, so what I've started doing and what I'll be doing for the next two weeks is studying my P3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four or five days on F3, et cetera, et cetera. This is not the right approach. 
you know, let, let's look at it logically, um, uh, Justina, and I'll take your advice on this. I mean, you know, we have the strategic level. Yeah, we have three subjects that you are tested on in a fairly rigorous manner. You know, those exams, particularly F3 and P3, they're not easy to get through. So you've been examined and shown uh, technical competence in each of the, str the strategic level subjects. Why would SEMA make the SCS exam dependent upon a really deep and strong knowledge of subjects that they have already examined? And this is the mistake the students make. It's not a retest of the three subjects. It's not. I can prove that. You don't have to believe me. I can prove that. Look at SEMA Connect. Look at the past exams. Yeah? Look at the degree to which uh, each of the sections, each of the tasks, go into detail on areas such as P3 or F3. And what you'll find that is that if this is a, if you have a glass here, it's completely full and it's F3. So that's all of the syllabus of F3. And what students think is that, okay, when I walk into the SCS exam, I need to know all of this like I did when I sat the OT exam in real, real detail. That's not the case. What you'll find in terms of this class is that they probably test around about 20, 30%. So they go into a little bit of detail, but they don't go to all the way to the end of the class. So by, by spending a lot of your time studying, restudying all of the three subjects, you're wasting time. What you should do is you should be looking <coughs> at mock exams, you should be practicing, and you should be attending good quality, high intuition to get advice from experts. There's the key to success.